Hi everybody, my name is Marius, I'm the creator of the BX Crispy Tuner. Today I am at 79 Sound in Cologne and I'm going to show you my preferred workflow of working with the Crispy Tuner in graphical mode, as well as show you all of the features and tools that it offers. Let's go! For many cases, simple and advanced mode are going to be more than enough to get the desired result. However, for full control of the pitch curve, you always need a graphical editor. Now, before I created the Crispy Tuner, I've been using various different graphical editors of pitch correction software. However, none of them really felt like they were super simple and easy to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of different tips and tricks, such as hotkeys, which I've added to the Crispy Tuner to tremendously speed up my workflow. So here we are in Logic Pro. I've set up the session, it's mixed and everything, but I'm going to show it to you once without any tuning, what we're starting with, and then the pitch corrected vocal that we will be producing at the end of this video. So the first step, of course, is to add the BX Crispy Tuner as the first plugin in your plugin chain. I've opened it here, set the root and scale, which I found using the BX Crispy Scale plugin. And a good start is always to just find out a tuning value that makes the tuned vocal sound somewhat like you want it to sound. So I'm just gonna play it back, listen to it and adjust the tuning knob accordingly. All right, so the vocal sounds pretty good. However, there are some places where I feel like uh, the pitch of the corrected vocal isn't what the singer desired. And this is where graphical mode comes into play. We've gotten a good result with simple mode. However, let's now tighten this up, clean up any notes that are not where they're supposed to be. And for that, we're just switching over to graphical mode. And as you can see, it asks you to play audio to record pitch data. So all that we need to do is simply play back the audio and the crispy tuner is going to record the pitch of each note and allow you to modify it. As you can see here, we've now recorded all of the pitch information into the graphical mode and it has created these note objects that you can actually drag around in order to affect the pitch of the tune signal. So let me just give you a little demonstration of this where we are focusing on the uh, very first phrase of the song. Hey, yeah. As you can hear, there's a little bit of shakiness here. So we're just going to go ahead and drag these notes down to where they belong to reduce the deviation. As you can see, the output pitch is much closer to the intended note now than the input pitch, which you can see as the red line. Let's play that back for comparison. Hey, yeah. There's a little more that we can tighten up around here. For example, let's see if we actually want this little note transition here. 
it doesn't seem like we do. This one here as well can be tightened up. And let's listen to it. So simply by moving these note objects up and down, we've already made a tremendous difference in the resulting vocal because it's not as shaky as it was uh, before we made these manual pitch adjustments. Of course, you can get pretty crazy with dragging the notes wherever you want. For example, if you want to build a new melody, you can do just that. I'm here using the up and down arrows to move the selected note object on the scale. So as you can see, it skips the semitone here because that is not on the scale. So let's just move this up a little in order to create a slightly different melody, just to show you what can be done. So that's obviously a very exaggerated example, but it illustrates how you can change the pitch of a vocal and the melody while still sounding natural. So let's just keep going through the vocal, cleaning up the melody wherever the pitch is not as intended. And my usual workflow for this is as follows. I go through each of these phrases and for continuous notes, I actually glue them together by selecting them all and hitting the G key. G is the hotkey that stands for glue. This is the advantage that continuous note objects uh, have a smoother transition. So if you don't need them to be separate, which could be a use case if you want to have different transition time tightness or for example, vibrato settings uh, on different parts of the phrase, then you can easily just glue them together, but you don't have to. So let's keep going through the vocal. Alright, this all sounded pretty in key, but I'm going to just turn this into a single note object again by selecting them all and hitting glue. The note object you're hovering above while hitting the G hotkey will affect which output pitch we're going to have. So as you can see, I'm hovering this note down here while pressing G and it's all going to take on the properties of this note object down there, including the pitch but we just want to keep it here in the middle. You're everything I've ever wanted. Now my life is whole in you. I think that life is whole. we don't want this little pitch fluctuation here. So we're just going to turn that into a single object. Life is whole in As you can hear. Life is whole. We don't have this. Is whole. It doesn't go up anymore. And that just sounds more like how it's intended. In you. Going to do the same for the word whole. Hole in you. And clean up this phrase because it doesn't need to have these pitch fluctuations. Yeah, everything I've desired, so I give. For this one, let's also glue this down here. So basically, you rarely want to have these rapid changes in pitch. So whenever you see note objects that are alternating between two notes, there's a good chance you actually want to glue them together. Let's hear it again for comparison. The original. Diet. Diet, so I give my Sounds a bit tighter now. You. And that's it. That's the initial step of tuning. Uh, we've essentially made sure that every part of the performance is exactly on the notes where it needs to be and cleaned it all up using the glue hotkey. So now that we got the unintended pitch deviations out of the way, I'm going to make sure that the transition time and tightness settings for each of the phrases are as I want them to be. So the reason why we initially figured out a good uh, tuning strength for our vocal is because these are going to be the settings that translate to transition time and tightness uh, when recording audio in graphical mode. Now, if we, for example, change this tuning strength to zero milliseconds, which corresponds to a transition time and tightness of zero milliseconds, 
and delete all of these objects using the delete button and play it back again. As you can see, it now applied a transition time and tightness of zero milliseconds to all of the newly created node objects. Now, we of course don't want that, so we're going to be using the undo feature, which you can do using this button up here in the toolbar, or just by pressing Z on your keyboard. So, now we're back where we intended to be. Of course, we can use Shift and Z, or the redo button up here, to redo the changes we just undid. It's worth noting that whenever the input audio that you recorded changes, you got to delete and re-import the audio because otherwise the crispy tuner thinks it's operating on a different signal than it actually is, which can cause unintended effects. So listening to this first phrase, I actually think I want to tighten it up a bit. So I'm going to reduce the transition time, which as you can see, um, affects the beginning of the notes, the note transitions. It specifies how quickly the output pitch should arrive at the center of the note. So if it's within zero milliseconds, as you can see, it's right at the start. This is what it's going to sound like. Very unnatural transitions. So I want to go for something more subtle here. However, a little bit lower of a value than we had initially. Let's see what that sounds like. That sounds very clean, I think. Um, there's not much uh, of an audible transition that would make it robotic, like we just heard with zero milliseconds. And in fact, I actually want to make it a little bit tighter as well. And as you can see, the tightness affects how much the tune signal is allowed to deviate from the perfect target note. So let's just put this down a bit in order to make it a little tighter. Let's hear what that sounds like. That sounded a little bit too um, emotionless, a dull, robotic to me. So I'm going to increase the tightness a little more to allow for the natural vibrato of the singer to come through. So for this phrase, it sounds a little bit noticeable, I would say, that there is pitch correction on here in this phrase where she goes up. Let's listen to this on solo. As you can see, there's a little bit of a jump in pitch here. So for this phrase, I'm actually just going to set the correction amount to 0% for this note object so that during this transition, follows the original pitch curve, which is going to sound more natural. Compare that to correction amount 100%. The difference is pretty subtle on this example, but if you have some uh, tough transitions that just sound too pitch corrected, too unnatural, then reducing the correction amount or playing with the transition time can be a good way to get it sounding more transparent. Yeah. As you can hear and see by the red input pitch line, there's a lot of natural vibrato in this part of the singer's performance. And I want to allow it to get through more by giving the tightness a higher millisecond value. As you can see, this allows it to deviate more from the center of the node, thus being closer to the original input vibrato that we want. Let's listen to that in context with the instrumental, which is always important because different instrumentals um, allow for different tuning strengths to work. I'm actually going to tighten it up a little bit more. I like how that sounds. Everything I've ever wanted now my life is whole in you. It sounds like she intended to go up by one semitone here. So I'm going to use the T hotkey to cut at the cursor position, splitting this note object into two and then 
move it up by one step on the scale and see what it sounds like. Now my life is whole. Yes, this is what it is supposed to sound like as opposed to what we had previously. Now my life is she wants to go up at life and we want to support that. So uh, we are moving this part of the node object up here. Life is whole in you. So as you could hear, simply moving this part of the note up makes a big difference in the singer's performance. And this is just a great thing about graphical mode. It gives you all of this freedom and precise control over the tuned vocal, which you wouldn't be able to achieve in simple and advanced mode or any sort of automatic tuning uh, for that reason, because the singer's input pitch just never really goes high enough to warrant uh, the tuning algorithm to make a new output target note up here, but you have that control in graphical mode. And I believe that it can never be replaced by any automatic setting. Life is whole in you. You're everything I So for this phrase, the singer actually went for some vibrato, but I think we can reinforce that. So for this, I'm going to be using the vibrato tool or the vibrato setting here on the side. So what I'm doing is I'm going up here, clicking this sine wave, which is the vibrato tool. And then when I click a note object and drag my cursor up and down, you can see that there is artificial vibrato in form of a sine wave being added. And if I drag the cursor right and left, you can see that it affects the frequency of the sine wave. So I'm just going to use this tool to create uh, a vibrato that matches the singer's natural vibrato. And for that, besides the vibrato tools feature of dragging the cursor, I'm going to be changing the pre-delay here just to offset the whole thing and make it match up. Here, using the enable button, you can compare what it looks like when enabling and disabling the vibrato respectively. I think we got the frequency matching pretty well now. Let's just move it a little over. And then using the fade in, we can make sure to subtly fade in the synthetic vibrato over time. So this is what it sounds like with added vibrato. In you. Here's the comparison to the original signal. In you. Sounds a lot less flat. If I'm going to just show the dry untuned signal by reducing the correction amount, in you. Yeah. you can hear that our synthetic vibrato just sounds more orderly, more in shape than the vibrato she originally sung. In you. Yeah. I really like it. Let's listen back to this in the context of the song. Now my life is whole in you You're everything i desired So I give my life to you And there we go. This is our verse tuned using graphical mode. Very transparent, sounds very natural to me. And let me just compare that to what it sounds like uh, when automatically tuned by switching back to a simple mode. This does not discard any of the changes you've made to graphical mode. You can switch back at any time, but the settings you applied in graphical mode will only take effect while graphical mode is active. So this is what it sounds like with automatic tuning in simple mode. Hey, yeah. Compared to the graphical mode. Hey, yeah. We were just able to clean it up a lot, tighten it up, make it sound more natural and remove any unwanted pitch fluctuations. So now that we're done with the verse, let's move on to the chorus. We have three main tracks here that are just singing the whole chorus, as well as a bunch of backing vocals that just uh, fill in some gaps. And I've already mixed everything for the backing vocals. I've just uh, used BX Crispy Tuner in simple mode for some automatic tuning. We don't need to do any in-depth graphical mode editing there. 
However, we do actually want to use graphical mode on the main vocals. So to get started on that, I'm just going to mute every vocal except for the main one and tune that because this main vocal is going to be our baseline, our standard for how the tuning is supposed to sound in the chorus. So now that I've imported the audio, I'm going to do the same as before and simply go through it once, clean up any pitch deviations that I don't like. So that's how quickly you can do it. Just go through it, clean up anything that you find as you hear it, and now it's ready for finer tuning. So now that I've cleaned up all of the pitch deviations, let me show you all of the tools that the Crispy Tuner offers. Now the workflow I showed you when tuning the verse is going to be sufficient for 99% of use cases. Nevertheless, these tools allow you to get creative with your workflow, get creative with the tune signal, and I'm going to show you how exactly to do that. So before I get into all of the details, let me just tell you about the help button up here. If you enable it, you can hover over any tool or segment of the Crispy Tuner and it's going to give you a nice little explanation of it. So whenever you are in doubt, use this, especially in graphical mode, which has quite a few features. So the first tool, which is the one that is selected by default, is the drag tool the cursor up here, which, as I've shown before, allows you to drag the target note of each note object. But where it gets really interesting is the target note tool. As you can see, now that we've selected it, we can just draw a line here and every note object that overlaps in time with the segment you just drew is going to be tuned to that target note. This can be used to quickly create melodies from scratch that have nothing to do at all with the melody that has been sung, which can be useful for some experimental music. For example, if you want to sing your whole song in one pitch and then later create a robotic sounding artificial melody using the Crispy Tuner's graphical mode. The next tool we have here is the pitch slope tool. So as you can see, when we have it selected and click and drag the edge of a note, it actually turns into a slope. This is a unique feature across all of the graphical editors that I'm aware of and it allows you to do effects such as for an EDM riser, for example. Let me just play that back to show you what it sounds like. You can even make this a little bit longer and rise a bit higher. Can be used very nicely uh, when you're about to set up an EDM drop, for example. It's not that suited for this song in particular, but that's what the slope tool can be used for. The next tool here is the pitch correction tool. This is similar to the vibrato tool, which I already showed you before, in that when you uh, drag it up and down, it simply adjusts both transition time and tightness. So this can be used to just quickly adjust both of these settings for a specific note object in case you just want to 
tighten up a single part of the performance. For example, here. Yes, I want this to be tighter. And that can be achieved very easily using the pitch correction tool. Next tool is the vibrato tool. I showed it before, but if you drag up and down, changes the amplitude of synthetic vibrato. If you drag left and right, changes the frequency of it. So we can use that to quickly find amplitude and frequency settings that match the original natural vibrato. As a side note, you can actually change the shape of the vibrato on the drop-down menu on the right here. So this, for example, gives us vibrato in the form of a square wave. So if we are turning down transition time and tightness all the way so that the vibrato is the only thing that affects the output curve, you can see that having a square shaped uh, vibrato gives us this effect here. Let's just set that to an amplitude of two semitones and see what it sounds like. I to... That was not very fitting maybe, but you can see uh, what kind of effect you can achieve with this. Let's just go even one semitone more. This is not going to be landing on a note that is on our scale, but it's fine for demonstration purposes. I to... Could also, of course, change this to a triangle wave. To... Sounds pretty similar to the sine wave or a sawtooth wave. So again, this is for creative effects. Um, you don't have to use it. You're probably not going to use it in most songs, but just having the option, having the flexibility is something that was really important to me when creating this tool. So the final two tools that we have here are the split and the glue tool. And as the name suggests, if we have the split tool selected, wherever we click, it's going to split the selected note object in two. And with the glue tool, you can simply glue them back together. Now, I'm always using the hotkeys for these instead of the tools, simply so you don't have to select the tools. Again, it is T for cutting and G for gluing. One tip that can really improve your productivity if you find yourself swapping between tools a lot is to use the number keys up on your keyboard in order to select a tool. So one would be the drag tool, three would be the slope tool, five would be the vibrato tool, etc., etc. That's just a neat little trick to know in case you have to switch tools a lot. So now that I'm happy with the main chorus vocal, I'm going to move on to tuning the backing vocals. It's pretty much the same process. You load it in and you do the tuning, except that this time it's important to make sure that the tuning matches that of the main vocal that you established um, before. You're my rock and my refuge, it's true. I surrender. As you can see, while recording the pitch data into the crispy tuner, there is something odd going on here. As you can see, the input pitch and therefore the placement of the output notes are one octave too low. My refuge, it's true. Can my refuge. There's also a little click, an audio glitch here, and the reason why this happens is because the crispy tuner detects the incorrect input pitch for your vocal. So here, as you can see, it just detects it as being one octave too low. And while this doesn't sound like a big problem at the moment, as soon as you start making changes to that signal here, it's going to give you some very noticeable artifacts. For example, here, My refuge. If we shift this uh, signal, which has been detected to be an octave too low, um, up, it's going to give us some artifacts. My refuge is... My refuge is... This is not what it's supposed to sound like at all. So in order to help the crispy tuner uh, correctly determine the pitch of the input signal, we can use the note detection range, which is uh, represented by these darker parts here on the timeline. So we can just drag the boundaries up to make sure that it only includes notes that are actually contained in the singer's performance and then re-record that part of the phrase. Ooh, you're my rock and my refuge, it's true, I surrender. As you can see, now that we made it explicit that these notes 
are not to be detected, they're not part of the input signal, it correctly determined the pitch of the input signal and we can do whatever we want with it and it's going to sound fine without any artifacts. So I followed the same steps as before for the backing vocals, for the chorus, and this is what it sounds like. I do, I do for you. You're my rock and my refuge, it's true. I surrender. As you can hear, these backing vocals give the whole chorus a much, much richer quality. And I'm just going to play them on solo for a second, just to show you what they sound like. I surrender all to you. You're my only hope, I look to. Everything I do. As you can see, I went for pretty relaxed, pretty high transition time and tightness settings for this background vocal because it doesn't need to be as on point and as focused as the main vocal. In fact, it shouldn't be as focused because um, it's going to give it a much warmer, natural, richer sound if it's just not as cleanly tuned and there are some slight deviations, some slight differences in the backing vocals. So we're done. Let me just show you the whole finished product that we have created today. You're everything I've ever wanted now my life is whole in you. You're everything I've desired so I give my life to you. I surrender all to you. You're my only hope I look to. Everything I do I And that's it. I hope that this video was useful to you and you could learn some tips and tricks to include in your preferred workflow. As always, if you have any questions or need some more in-depth information, please refer to the BX Crispy Tuners manual. My name is Marius and thank you very much for watching.